You'll hear it time and time again on the internet. The MCU fell off after Endgame. Things haven't been as good since Iron Man left. Phase 4 was underwhelming. And more recently, Thor Love and Thunder sucked. Quantumania sucked. Secret Invasion sucked. Whether or not you agree with these sentiments, you cannot deny that these sentiments are growing amongst the fans and casual audiences of this cinematic universe. But why is that? That's a question. That's a question! Certainly the argument could be made that these films have simply gotten much worse. There are your aforementioned films like Love and Thunder, a sequel that pales in comparison to Taika Waititi and Chris Hemsworth's previous teaming in 2017's Thor Ragnarok. There's also films like Shang-Chi, which I don't love as much as some, but I still think was a worthy introduction to the character. A movie that wouldn't have been out of place quality-wise amongst the earlier Marvel phases. No Way Home was beloved, and people seem to gravitate towards shows like WandaVision and Loki. Independence. Authority. Style. There's still quality MCU in the mix, if you know where to look. Certainly an argument can be made for oversaturation. There were more hours of Phase 4 programming than the first three phases combined. Even hardcore fans are going to struggle to keep up with all of that. But an abundance of films, TV shows and special presentations alone can't be the sole reason the MCU has fallen off. No, I actually think it's a symptom of a much more embedded issue that as far as I can tell, no one is really talking about. The MCU's biggest enemy now is time itself. And that's not because Kang the Conqueror is around the corner. What do I mean by this? Well, first off, let's cast ourselves back to the first three phases of the MCU. Answer this. Who were the three most important heroes? I'd wager that most of you would say Iron Man, Captain America, and Thor. Iron Man kicked off everything in 2008 with, uh, yeah, Iron Man. He returned two years later in 2010's Iron Man 2, but not before making a pit stop in The Incredible Hulk. He had a little break in 2011, before playing not so well with others in 2012's The Avengers. He then concluded a trilogy with 2013's Iron Man 3, sat out exactly one year, and came straight back to bat by creating ChatGPT with legs in 2015's Avengers 2. From 2015 until his death in 2019, he never skipped a beat, making a key appearance in every Cap movie, a Spidey movie, and finally two climactic Avengers movies. Tony ended up sitting out for only the years 2009, 2011, and 2014. The years he appeared, he always cracked wise, kicked ass, and forwarded a key relationship with at least one other Avenger. I am Iron Man. Captain America actually had a relatively short stint in the MCU, compared to a whole host of other characters who hit a decade and change, but his eight years burned bright. He made an appearance every single year, and if he wasn't an integral lead, he was a very funny and memorable cameo. He proved that it's not about simply inserting a hero into as much as possible, it's about the time that we spend with them. Cap popping up in 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018 and 2019 ensured that he never went away until it was time to say goodbye. For a Cap fanboy such as myself, it was pure bliss. Ah, uh, good times. Uh, Thor kicked off his run with three consecutive appearances from 2011 to 2013, all involving his brother Loki. That duo was so key to the earliest successes of the crossovers, and whilst he then popped up once from 2014 to 2016, he ended his initial run with another trio of annual films in 2017's Thor Ragnarok, 2018's Infinity War, and 2019's Endgame. I like to think of it as his pain trilogy. 2011 to 2013 is like the classic Thor with Loki. 2017 to 2019 Thor is the iteration where he loses everything and learns to bounce back. It's truly awesome. Truly awesome indeed. The latest in a long line of bastards and he'll be the latest to feel my vengeance fate. Wills it so. Just let me do it. Just 
Maxine, let me do something good. Something good. No. Not only were they seen regularly, but they crossed over regularly. We were given ample time to see them working together as a team, or being opposed, every couple of years at the very least. The Trinity met in 2012, and then again in 2015. Cap and Tony got a crucial chapter between them in 2016, even though all three were largely separated in 2018, that was kind of the point. Probably Steve Rogers. Oh, great. Maybe. They fully reassembled in 2019, and that unity that was forged in 2012 and 2015 was what came to its satisfying conclusion here. Just as long as we're all in agreement. When Cap, Tony and Thor walk up to Thanos for one last battle, everyone got chills, because we'd seen these guys go through so much to get here, and they were more united than ever before against this purple nutsack. Picking up the hammer was only so good because of Thor's glee at witnessing it. I knew it. But it wasn't just the core trinity that were well acquainted with audiences. Black Widow was introduced in 2010 with Iron Man 2, popped up two years later in a leading role with the Avengers in 2012, and then came back in another two years later for the Winter Soldier. By the time we came to the consecutive sandwich that was Ultron and Civil War, Widow had made five meaningful appearances in six years. The Hulk didn't appear in Civil War, but when we last saw him his absence was woven into the story as he was seemingly sent off careening into space. He then got the Black Widow Winter Soldier treatment with a supporting but highly effective role in another title character's movie. This made sure that even though he had no solo movie, audiences had seen him in 2012, 2013, 2015, 2017, 2018 and 2019. I see this as an absolute win. Even a character like Hawkeye, who skipped all of the solo movies in Phase 2 and wasn't seen from Avengers to Avengers Age of Ultron, only missed two summers of MCU. And on top of that, even if we didn't see him, we knew that he would inevitably pop up in the second Avengers movie. He wasn't in limbo, even if he was off screen. Plus, as a side note, he was very nearly in Captain America the Winter Soldier anyway, in a cool deleted sequence that would have explained away Cap's stealth outfit. Outside of the Core 6, it always felt like when a character arrived, they were there to stay. Scarlet Witch was first shown on screen in a 2014 post credit scene, was then key in 2015 and 2016, sat out for exactly one year, and then made the heartbreaking decision to kill the love of her life in 2018, before, you guessed it, avenging him in 2019. You took everything from me. That's five appearances. Sam Wilson's The Falcon appeared in the 2014 debut Captain America The Winter Soldier, twice in 2015 with solid cameos in Age of Ultron and Ant-Man, before another key part in 2016's Civil War, 2018's Infinity War, and 2019's Endgame. If we substitute two 2015 appearances for that 2017 gap, he got a string of roles right up to his eventual appointment as the next Captain America. Thank you. Even if we strip out the years that were cameos, most of these characters only sat out for a year at a time, and they got plenty of years where they were making consecutive appearances. Compare these examples to the later examples after Endgame. There's lots of heroes introduced each year, with no obvious returns lined up. There used to be a handful of key characters popping up every two years at most, developing the overarching story in addition to their personal growth. Now it's more like three or even four years when we'll see someone next, and in between time we're seeing more and more heroes introduced on top of that. What used to be a couple of projects in between is now a slew of projects, half of which are television shows totaling three or four hours apiece. What used to be an appearance in either a team-up film or a solo film, with cameos a rarer thing, is now often multiple years without so much as a hint of a solo project. Captain Marvel got a solo film and an Avengers appearance in the same year, now it's been four years until her next sequel. Doctor Strange popped up in Infinity War, Endgame and No Way Home, but his solo sequel came a whopping six years after the first. That's an awfully long time to go without any kind of introspection from the master of the mystic arts. I get scared. <laughs> Shang-Chi is almost past two years, with no sequel in sight, if that even happens by 2025. In spite of being a huge success, he hasn't even been mentioned. 
Eternals. The Eternals saw a whole new supergroup introduced when there was already enough going on and they haven't had any concrete sequel chatter. That's been two years. There's definitely nothing happening in 2024 and even 2025 seems unlikely. Neither Hawkeye's popped up in almost two years. Again, nothing planned filming wise for 2024, so that's probably looking unlikely for close to four years. Moon Knight is already over a year old with no sequel series in sight. He was a big deal to bring into the fold, but it just feels like he's been as forgotten as almost every other Disney Plus show. When can we expect him to return? She-Hulk is also just over a year old and there's no follow-up series in sight. Okay, now get back to the show. Werewolf by Night might see its key duo absent for the rest of time. Nick Fury went away completely for three years, only to return in the lackluster secret invasion. Maybe. Well, probably. White Vision flew away over two years ago and hasn't popped up. Ironically, Scarlet Witch returned just over a year later from WandaVision to Multiverse of Madness. That actually felt like the first three phases in terms of timing, but that suffered because many people felt like they were missing a crucial piece of the puzzle as she broke bad after ending her series with the promise of turning over a new leaf. The Black Panther sequel is a little different because obviously it had to try and handle the tragic passing of the late great Chadwick Boseman. However, now that Letitia Wright's Shuri has taken up the mantle, it's unclear when she will next appear. The Bozeman Panther appeared in 2016, 2018 and 2019, but unless Shuri makes an appearance before the next Avengers movie, we won't see this character until 2026, four years after Wakanda Forever and after she just got made the new Black Panther. The core six Avengers presence were felt across the first three phases, and we never had to endure their absence for very long. Now we're being bombarded with so many new characters, it's easy to forget a Moon Knight or a Black Widow 2.0 or whoever the members of the Eternals were called. I, I went through my childhood to teenage years with the MCU, and partly why my friends and I got so sucked in was because we really got to know the main heroes. By the time Guardians Volume 2 came out, I went from school to uni, and that was only three years. That felt like a sizable gap at the time, considering how accustomed we were to having the Avengers making annual or biannual appearances. But of course they could kind of get away with it because they were in their own sort of bubble. Imagine being 10 when Doctor Strange 1 comes out, and then 16 by the time Multiverse of Madness comes out. That's not going to allow you to grow up alongside the heroes the same way I got to with Iron Man, Cap and Thor. That was a huge part of the old MCU's charm. That was part of the fun, checking in on them every year, things moving forward, new alliances forged, battles won, and then ultimately alliances broken, battles lost. There was Ultron to look forward to, the Civil War, the Ragnarok, the rise of Thanos. Whereas now it's triple the amount of content, with triple the amount of characters, we check in on so many people that everybody gets put on hold for longer stretches just so everyone can be serviced. I don't feel like we're in a living, breathing world anymore. We're just giving everyone else a small chance to shine before we've got to go do the, the next new thing. I think this could also be why the MCU's oversaturation feeling didn't truly start to kick in until the second half of 2021 leading into 2022. The first four projects all featured characters we'd seen a lot of in the old era. Scarlet Witch, Vision, Falcon, The Winter Soldier, Loki and Black Widow. Even though that content was enough for two whole years squished into six months, the problem wasn't so apparent because we were used to seeing familiar faces regularly. The new Captain America hasn't been seen for two years already. When Captain America was the Falcon, he ironically had a far more consistent presence than he does now. Even Spider-Man went from popping up a lot to there being only mutterings of his fourth solo movie. It's almost the two year anniversary of No Way Home. I would have expected his fourth movie to be imminent going by the old ways. 2017, 2019, 2021. And sure, two years gap for Loki and three years gap for Cap 2.0 doesn't seem too different to the old phases, but when you compound it with the fact that now a gap like that is filled with hours upon hours upon hours of MCU, it feels like double that time. 
We've had a whole last Thor movie since Loki last popped up. That duo used to be inseparable. Instead of forging ahead with the cool buddy cop duo in Cap and the White Wolf, they'll be starring in two separate feature films in 2024. There's also less excitement doing it all this way. Sure, it sounds cool to introduce every single bloody Marvel character left unadapted, but remember how many years went by in the early stages of the MCU where we yearned for Doctor Strange and Black Panther. For years we only had a reference to Wakanda in Iron Man 2 and a casual name drop to Doctor Strange in Cap 2 and everybody was losing their minds. By the time they were introduced, it felt like a massive, massive deal. Imagine if Moon Knight got the same kind of build up instead of just dropping by after we've already met the Eternals, Shang-Chi, a new Hawkeye and a new Black Widow like six months prior. After Endgame, Marvel should have picked a new core trinity and ensured that these characters were making regular appearances and bringing people together. Let's say it was, I don't know, Doctor Strange, Captain Marvel and Shang-Chi. You'd have a powerful character on Earth to cover the mystic side, a powerful character in space to cover the cosmic side, and a new character for audiences to rediscover the MCU. Doctor Strange has popped up a decent amount in fairness, but he's also not been driving anything. He starred in two multiverse movies that were so loosely connected, their biggest bridge was the fact that one of their stars and one of their directors are a golden comic book pairing who haven't collaborated since 2007. Captain Marvel made a really brief cameo in Miss Marvel, but otherwise hasn't been seen in four years. Her presence hasn't been felt whatsoever. Shang-Chi's solo movie? And that was two years ago. In the phase one to three era, his second movie would be upon us by now. He probably would have properly met some Avengers by now. We'd know him through and through. Pick whichever three characters you want for argument's sake. Imagine the last couple of years have been structured around one or two solo films for each of them. We're approaching the end of their trilogies to make way for new characters at this point. A team up film has been in there somewhere to keep the dynamics alive and push us into the next epic chapter. If you're a kid watching Phase 4 to 5, you've now got your own version of Cat, Iron Man and Thor, heroes you know really well who have been through some really interesting battles and changes. The world's been growing as you have. The decision to not do an Avengers movie at the end of Phase 4 was a no-win scenario. I understand why Feige was resistant, people would have bemoaned the MCU growing stale for doing another Avengers movie just three years after one entitled Endgame, but at the same time none of the new powers that be have formed any kind of meaningful team. Imagine if Quantumania had been an Avengers movie in the same sense as Civil War. Having all those characters in the 2016 crossover didn't detract from the fact that it was Steve Rogers' movie. What if Scott Lang was the clear lead of Quantumania, but a newly formed team of Avengers crashed into the Quantum Realm with him? What if the new Cap, Strange, Shang-Chi, Miss Marvel and more were introduced to Kang and vowed by the end of the movie to stop his variants as the next era of the Avengers? We'd be at a point where something essential had happened to tie off Phase 4 slash kick off Phase 5. The cinematic universe, in some sense, was a lie. It wasn't really a universe of lots of stories that happened to share the same space. It was really one big ongoing story, with a handful of core characters that you saw sometimes annually, but at most every two to three years. It was always clear where they were heading, or when they would pop up next. The first four years were all heading towards the formation of the Avengers, and the next seven years were leading up to a climactic battle over the Infinity Stones. We either got character drama like Civil War, or we got a movie introducing the Infinity Stones, every single time in that time period. And I think that's ultimately why there's this persistent feeling that the MCU has fallen off, or isn't as strong as it used to be. It's because the story they set out to tell... finished. Everything that was truly connected was tied off. Now we have a true cinematic universe, with countless heroes all off doing various things, no endgame in sight, no MacGuffins persisting. Most characters vanish in between hours and hours of other stories, and it's often a mystery as to when we'll truly see them again. We knew from 2008 to 2012 that Iron Man would one day meet Thor, Cap and Hulk, but who knows if the cast of Werewolf by Night will ever meet the TVA, or the Marvels, or the Guardians, or the Ten Rings, more to the point, why would they? My most anticipated MCU movies are undoubtedly Deadpool 3, The Kang Dynasty and Secret Wars. Deadpool 3 has somehow managed to feel like it was always building towards its MCU placement without even trying. <laughs> 
Having Wade go back in time to save Vanessa ended up being the perfect setup to fold in the TVA, the incursions from Doctor Strange, and the supposed next Thanos in Kang. If the rumours of returning to Earth 838 are true, then Multiverse of Madness will feel like the perfect setup also. Going to a world where Magneto is heartbroken over what happened to Wanda and decides enough is enough. Not to mention the death of Xavier. <laughs> The way the time travel in Deadpool 2 and the multiverse hopping in both Loki and Strange has all gone down makes it feel like this was always the plan, even though it so wasn't. Well, that's just... Don't great. you dare finish that sentence. Don't do it. I'm sick of it. It will be the lead-in for a whole new team, the X-Men, to end up meeting the MCU heroes we know and love, and that is super exciting to me. In 2014, I saw The Winter Soldier, Days of Future Past, and The Amazing Spider-Man 2, and I never thought that all three of those movies would be chapters in a multiverse saga. Only a character like Wade Wilson could wing it and end up connecting the dots this well. The re-emergence of the X-Men and the idea of crashing universes will lead right into the Kang Dynasty. That is a full tilt Avengers movie, so we'll at least see a bunch of these limboed characters from Phase 4 to 5 meeting up and unifying for a common goal. That and Secret Wars could be an awesome spectacle involving all of our favourite characters whilst hopefully still leaning on the storytelling in the same way Infinity War and Endgame did. But amongst all that, Marvel needs to show some real focus. How is Captain America 4 going to lead into all of this? How is the cosmic side, the mystical side, the supernatural side going to feel essential? I'm not saying every single movie needs to be a trailer for the next one, because that's not what phases 1 to 3 were anyway. They just need to feel like they're not content that are shotgunned onto Disney+. Plus. They need to give us a reason to care again to make each movie feel like an essential chapter of a larger whole. As much as an Agatha Harkness show could be good and Wealth by Night was fun, there needs to be more streamlining. Focus on characters like Shang-Chi and return to giving the interpersonal relationships between these heroes the time they need, so that when we get to the next Infinity War, we'll be just as ready. Simply put, the MCU just needs more time. A big thank you to my full fat tier patron, Dr. Chike and Nathan Shaw. If you'd like to donate money to my Patreon, you can find me at patreon.com slash fullfatvideos. If you'd like to find me on Instagram, you can find me at full underscore fat underscore videos. And if you'd like to find me on Twitter, you can find me at, at fullfatvideos.